Moving into 4.3, which is the 2016-17 budget adjustment. Turn it over to Bob. Take just a minute here, getting set up. Be a shorter presentation than we think. <laughs> Here you go. It's on the TV, but not the uh, screen, guys. Hmm. Cindy, can that does that screen pull out a little bit? Do you guys see that at all? I can see it. I can see mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Well, Brad, you on your can we turn that light off above it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, there you go. Oh, wow. Well, would you start there, Bob, while Dave's playing? Yep. Everybody set? Mm hmm. All right. As you know, it's, uh, I guess, the budget season again. It goes a long time. So this is just the start. Uh, you know that school budgets, just to remind everybody out there, are, um, are not advisory in nature, like most people think of a budget, uh, has to reflect basically both the accounting of the source of the income and how we're spending that income. So as you go through the course of a year, you have to do what are called budget adjustments, and I'll ask you to approve that after we've finished with this one. It's typically to do one halfway through February, March, just depends on how much we have accumulated, what needs to be done, and you have to do another one at the very end of the year again. Um, the confusing part about that go to the next one, is that the timeline as you look at it, here we are at the mid-year uh, budget uh, revision on uh, March 20th. Uh, we will do a, um, starts at 6.30 prior to the board meeting on the 17th in April. That's usually our budget workshop. Uh, depends how much information is out from the state, how much I can tell you it's a budget workshop because we're very dependent on, uh, at that time, looking at student enrollment. Uh, I'll be able to share some of the major costs that we have coming that we know of. Uh, some of those personnel costs, and hopefully we'll know enough about the state budget we can share with you where we are. Sometimes in April it's still getting filled in. Um, the governor is always way out in front, just depends if the House and Senate are there, and if you have both of those, you can make a pretty good guess. If you only have one and not the other two, it's hard to know how that will work out, but that's coming up on the 17th. And then we bring you the proposed 17-18 budget on the first board meeting in June. And then we follow that up um, with an interesting meeting always because you're going to do your final approval of the 16-17 budgets and at the same time you're going to adopt the 17-18 budget for the first time. And one of the reasons that I wanted to point that date out to you also is because with those two things going on at the same time, you have to remember that we are closing out one budget before we are actually at the end of the year. And so typically the audited numbers that come back after that should be close, but they're not going to be dead on. So sometimes in our current budget, you'll see it here in a minute when I run through it, uh, our fund balance prediction of where we were going to even start the year is off. And if it's off, either high or low, it throws off, and we adjust it this time. So that's there. Okay, there are typically some <clears throat> different major factors that affect the budget adjustment as you go. Um, in this case, it's student enrollment. You're, it's always a little guessing game. We budgeted for 7,685, if you remember, was more of a guessing go this time because we had the, if you will, Dow, Dow Corning situation going on and mm -hmm. nobody really could predict. I think we came pretty darn close. I think we more likely have seen between the two count days more effect of that because we've lost a few more students. That's typical in that gap, but it looks like a few more um, as we've looked at our spring count. But right now we're, we're up seven, so again, that will cause a budget adjustment because they're about 8,300 a piece, so you can get an idea of the kinds of things we have to change on the budget adjustment. Sometimes there's vol uh, volatility and timing in the state funding. For 16, 17, we had most of the information when we started, so that makes it a little different uh, year that way. Sometimes we've been waiting for all kinds of information to come in. We always have local revenue factors. Uh, I don't know how else to say this, but Midland's different. Uh, you know, I've been in the job now three years. Whenever you try to get any advice from somebody, as soon as you start describing it, they go, ooh, we don't have anything like that. <laughs> um, we have a lot of personal property tax, for example. So when the personal property tax exemption came in, 
how we were going to get reimbursed by that wasn't very clear. Um, a check appeared. Uh, that's good because that much local revenue wasn't there, so it just replaces it. But you weren't sure how that was going to go. Um, we also have a lot of, I'll call them development zones, renaissance zones, brownfields, and they vary from year to year. The, the two biggies lately, uh, where they actually capture the money and we have to pay it back and the state makes it up, are the uh, East End and the um, Shaheen building that's being built. Um, those both are capturing money back. And literally, the city gives us the local tax, then turns it on and bills us for it back again. And so we have to make sure the state understands that so that they make up that difference. But they will affect some of your budget numbers. They're hard to predict. Um, we also get changes in special services. And, and the reason for that's pretty simple. Y you don't know the population that you're serving and the disabilities involved. And, and in certain cases, it's just more expensive than others, and others it's not. Uh, you can bus more, you can bus less. And so there'll be changes in, in the funding for special education, both through us, through the ESA, um, in both situations. And then the other big thing always, of course, is the budget variation. You know, we reach the end of the year using the budget I put in 1%. I always hope it's a lot more than that, but, you know, where's it been? Anywhere from a little bit negative to 3%. We haven't seen 3% in a long time, but uh, budget variation just means that they don't spend everything that they had and that comes back to us. Uh, or sometimes it could be we received a little bit more money in the end. We want that, okay? That's the, that's the good thing to happen, so it's not bad. Okay, so there are major revenue changes. Again, I just tried to highlight some for you today. The bottom line's the important part, if you will. Uh, the revenue changes that we're seeing in this March adjustment, uh, about 1.33 or 1.34 million. Um, starting with the state funding increase, uh, student enrollment's part of that. The uh, section 22A, 22B, those are state aid categories. The 22F, uh, we knew we were gonna get, but believe it or not, a year ago there were two 22Fs, and they said you were gonna get one of them. We actually got both of them. It's a good <laughs> thing, so that's a chunk of it. And then some of the, the Renaissance Zone Brownfield offsets, so the state is up that way. Our Medicaid uh, reimbursement, which you can bill for Medicaid for our special needs students, and that's down from where we thought it would be. There's lots of reasons for that. Sometimes you don't have as much service as the year before, which is what you're really basing it on. And there are some things that get denied when you bill them. In other words, they, they don't consider that a legitimate uh, uh, billable uh, thing. And in some cases, we've had one where they've decided afterwards uh, whether our psychologist could bill or not, depending on what their degree was. Not that we need that going in. That's an afterthought, but that happens sometimes. They come back in and say, you know, these people can bill. Guess what? These people can't bill. Uh, nobody's fault. Just different interpretations. If, if you've been involved in the state long enough, you know that will happen. That you'll get, they'll tell you one thing one year and you turn right around the next year and it's changed again. So uh, that does happen. Uh, for example, and you'll see some with the letter C on here, a lot of things that come into revenue go right back out or are restricted in where they go. So uh, we applied for an early literacy grant, 83,000 increased revenue, all going back out because the grant specified what it was supposed to be used for in early literacy. Uh, the Section 24 are students that are placed by the courts um, through lots of different ways. So uh, you get some money for those. Again, that's not very predictable. It's just uh, what's happening in that school year. Federal grants, uh, that's uh, sometimes carryover, sometimes just a little bit difference in the funding as to what we thought was coming in. That goes right back out. Uh, the TRIG grants are the same way. That's technology. And so we got a little bit extra there that, that we're spending. Um, you always get a special ed a state aid adjustment. Uh, in this case, it's down, sometimes it's up. They're always funding you from the year before. So when they see your final numbers and stuff that are coming in, they'll start adjusting how much they've been giving you. So it just depends on where you're at. Uh, 147C, that's the state's uh, contribution towards the state retirement system. It puts a cap on it. Um, always hard to predict. Uh, not always based, you would think, with all the young teachers we took in, that should go down. Okay, because again, it's using some of the information from a year ago, so it doesn't necessarily do that. And of course, depending on where the retirement rates are going, it can fluctuate. So we got some there. You'll see on the other side, it's going right back out again. 147C money is, uh, here you go, write us a check back. <laughs> so it just goes in and out a as we do that. And then I wanted to put there, it really does not affect the general fund at all, but I did want you to know our STEM grants. As you <coughs> know, we've, we've got a lot of foundational money coming in. And it looks like we're going to be ahead by 200 and 
uh, 77,000 this year. So again, that's, that's reserved. It really doesn't show them the general fund. It doesn't show them the general fund revenues. But I wanted you to know in the fund balance, you would see that. Now remember that 1.34 revenue coming in? Here's your major expense changes. I'm going to draw your attention to the bottom. There it's 1.32. So this is a very, I hate to call it in and out budget adjustment, but it is. About as much revenue as came in is going right back out in different kinds of expenditures. We had some reductions, but we also had some additional expen uh, expenses, so it just depends. Uh, we had some staff-related ones. You might say, how did that happen? Well, remember, we were hiring a lot of people, so when we gave you the budget back in June, we had no idea where the salaries were going to come in. So I think we came pretty close. We didn't know how much experience we would have, what we'd have to grant, so there was some money left there. Uh, our bidding out of the property and liability insurance this year, uh, 31000 um, Remember that 147C money? It kind of affects the retirement, too, because if you have less salary, then the retirement that goes to the state is less. So, you know, actually, it's not a very big amount, but we'd have some FICA savings, too, so reduced exp expenditures. There's the federal grants going back and forth. There's the 147C rate cap. Uh, we're getting more, I call them taxable value changes or paybacks, uh, more, not the big tax appeals you used to think of, but I'd say more board of review, mid to smaller size companies, and they're just adding up. More people going to the appeal process saying, I think I'm being assessed too high. Um, and so you're seeing a bit more of that. And those are all then taxes we collected based on what they thought their taxable value was that we have to pay back. So it's a little higher than, than it's been. Our special ed uh, education billing from the ESA is down a little bit so they didn't bill us for as much. And then finally, the bottom one is, you remember, as part of our um, uh, settlement with the teachers, uh, early was that we funded their HSA earlier, and so you'll see that that three that was 322,000 more. Now the nice thing about that is if you saw the in, you know, the revenue coming in and the expenses going out, we were able to do that funding of the HSA and really not change where the budget stands. So that's a very good thing as we go forward um, for everybody. Wanted to give you the big snapshot that you usually like to see. Where are we with? Uh, the general funds as you look at it. Um, you can see where the revenue was about 78.7 million, um, now going to be as our March adjustment about just a little bit over 80 million, so it's up that uh, 1.34. Um, if you look at the budgeted expenditures, it uh, was about 77.7, it's now about 79, so again you see the, the increase there. Um, the surplus that we thought we'd have, and remember that's the first time we've had a surplus in a long time, we thought that our revenues would exceed our expenditures by about uh, a million, just a little bit more. And you'll see it's still in the, almost the exact same ballpark. Uh, what is that, 11,000, no, excuse me, 17,000 difference. So um, a little bit of difference, but not a lot. Uh, remember that budget variance? Again, just to give you an idea, we're thinking 1% uh, of expenses. So you can see that we were still anticipating a surplus at the end of about 1.8 or 1.9 million when we get there. If we get more budget variance, uh, that would be higher. You, know, you get less budget variance, then it's not going to be that much. So again, we'll know a lot more in June and even better when you get the audit back on that. Um, the fund balance looks like, boy, how did that jump that high? Remember what I said, when we started this budget and adopted it in June, we didn't have the audited fund balance. So if you look at the difference between those two numbers there, how did it jump by, um, it's about 1.1 or 1.2 million. It's exactly the difference in the starting spot. So when you uh, adopted the budget in um, June, we had projected that we were going to end last year at about 8.6 million. We actually ended up, if you remember, way better than that. And we ended up more at like 9.7. So the difference is really in our starting point. So all we're doing with this budget adjustment is saying, look, our first starting point was not good. If we put the same amount of money away, we're going to have more money. So that's where we're at. So again, uh, the percentage you can see there is 14.7 instead of the 13.4 we've had. We'll fine tune it more as we go. So when you get to that June budget, you get to the end, you know what people are gonna spend or not spend or, or did spend, um, and that will change slightly. Um, but I think uh, I can tell you that, you know, looking better than uh, lots of messages I've had to bring to you for for a while, and, it, and you know, we keep doing that. I think it's allowed us to do some of the things uh, that we want to do. 
if you were to look ahead, these are the kinds of things we'll talk about both in April and then in the June budgets when they come forward. Um, and this is more towards the 17, 18 budget than it is 16, 17, but we have our balance, our budget process. If you're new to us, that's where each building, each uh, program uh, comes in and sits down with myself and the uh, uh, business uh, financial director and uh, it's my Mike stops in, um, but they talk to us about their needs. And uh, we try, we've been trying to hold that side of the budget, which is not very big, don't forget, uh, most of our costs is in personnel because we're a personnel driven business. Uh, but the 15% that goes elsewhere, we try to hold the lid on, but we're also looking at ways to um, maybe put some money there. I would tell you that uh, we're slightly more optimistic, it's not in across the board, but that we can maybe put some money, uh, Mike, you call them silos, so I'll call it the same thing, but where maybe we could set aside some for furniture, let's say. Now, it might not go to every building, but we could start maybe a little silo where we could say, hey, if somebody needs um, some furniture, you know, this year goes here and here. Or the same could be said for um, activities to close the achievement gap kind of thing. So if we can get to the right point, we can build some of those to help us do uh, some of the things that we'd, we'd like to do. Uh, the student enrollment's always going to be a biggie. Hard to predict. Uh, the consultant hasn't reported yet, so I couldn't tell you exactly where we'll be there. We, I'll have a, some kind of prediction for you in April, but I'll have to fine tune that by June. We'll know that. Um, the state funding, um, you know, I think Mike's mentioned in his Friday letter a few times, it's, uh, you know, there are some very good points in the governor's proposal. Whether that's what we get to or not is a different matter. Um, the 31A alone uh, would be a big chunk of this governor's, about 1.7 million. It's got use for the at-risk students. That's what we use it for. So there's a lot of good where places we can use that in the process. But again, you also hear things like, um, that Title IIA, which is money we used, might be totally gone. And if that's gone, then, then that's something that uh, right now funds learning coaches, different uh, professional development that we'd have to be looking to fill. Um, let's see, personnel costs. We'll have a little better idea. Staffing levels will be just in April, kind of in the middle of it all. So we won't really know, you know, with the number of students we have, how, many, uh, how much personnel do we need and what grade and all those kinds of things. Um, but we will have a better idea of salaries and the benefits, hopefully, um, that we can talk to you about because we should have our um, medical rates by then. So at least we'll know going uh, forward uh, what kind of percentage increase we can look for there. And I say percentage increase because I guarantee you it's a percentage increase. It's not going down. So, so that will happen. Um, we get a better idea later on about our transfers to with the ESA because don't forget they run some of the special needs programs. We run some. Um, it's actually an exchange of the checks when it works. And Sometimes uh, we come out a little ahead and they come out a little ahead, so it's uh, something that we have to take a look at. And again, the available fund balance. Touch it, don't touch it, use a little bit of it. I mean, those are all questions that, that boards answer, so those are the, like always, um, if you have questions, I'll be glad to answer them now. We try to make sure that the presentation or copy of the budget, the copy of the budget's always on, even the um, uh, amended ones, is always on the transparency website. We try to put a clip of this part of the presentation at least on the website too so you can see that. And then again, the next time you would basically look at this is in June and we'd have you uh, amend that last time with the budget. The board does need to, to approve the, the amendment. All right. At this time, I would entertain a motion <coughs> to approve the 2016-17 budget adjustment. So moved. Second. That's supported by Pam. Are there any questions, discussion? I think it's good news, and it looks like the budget process is working well, and it's been a real team effort and a lot of uh, uh, work and concessions and, and um, going after the same outcomes together as a team, and I guess that, that's what really makes this work and is exciting. I'm actually thrilled that uh, the teachers and uh, were able to get the HSA um, amount in their accounts. I think that's a, a great win for them as well. 